Concerned Citizens of Mason Square's Farmer's Market is back again this summer. Every Saturday, you'll find fresh, nutritious, locally grown fruits and vegetables at affordable prices. The Farmer's Market is located at the Mason Square Health Center, 11 Wilbraham Road in Springfield. Food sellers accept senior and WIC vouchers, and the market is now set up to accept food stamps. For more information, call 1-800-247-9632. That's 1-800-247-9632. Hope Hope to see see you at at the the Farmer's Market Market in Mason Square Square this this summer. We have sweet peppers, apex, butternut squash. This is purple cabbage, regular cabbage, onions. We have one little sad zucchini. <laughs> we have some cucumbers, and these are cherry tomatoes. A fine basil, okra, golden um, potatoes, tomatoes, green tomatoes, purple potatoes, and more cherry tomatoes. Well, we came into a lot of carrots one time, and people were sharing recipes about carrot juice. Coming together around that, people who don't know each other and just sharing their recipes, um, having the kids out here running around, folks just talking and gathering is very important. Um, the community is just showing love. Well, I bought corn last week, and I wanted to make some uh, uh, fried corn. Last week I made fried tom- uh, tomatoes and tomato gravy with rice. I love my cabbage and then uh, my, my eggplant. Mm-hmm. I like to steam it. I like to, um, I, I, don't, I shred the cabbage and I like to cook it with onions. I just like to steam them. And for my grandsons, I made the cream corn, southern fried cream corn. They love it. And kale. I found kale here. I will be doing um, sweet potato, probably maybe sweet potato pie from the sweet potatoes and yams, or I may just eat them raw like they are. They are so tender. And it's important to have one in our neighborhood so people can don't have to go too far out to get vegetables. They can come right down to the square and get it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I come every Saturday because I like fresh vegetables and just to support uh, support healthy eating I, I, and support uh, the local farmers. I believe in local farmers. And fresh food. Um, the food that we get here today, we can have it fresh on the table for Sunday dinner tomorrow, this afternoon. The vegetables at the supermarket definitely aren't as fresh. I mean, who knows how long they sit there for. You can go into a store, you'll see a table full of peppers, and you can go there a few days later, and I guarantee you some of the peppers that were sitting there the days before that you went are the same peppers sitting there. It kind of makes you wonder what goes into this pepper that will allow it to sit here for so long and still look as good as it did when it first got put here. I mean, like, obviously they have to put something in it that'll make it last longer. So it kind of makes you wonder what's going into my food that's going to end up going into me and how is it going to affect me in the short run or in the long run. A lot of times people in the inner city don't necessarily get what they want. They get what they're given. So, um... And if they want, if they want organic stuff, I think it's important for them to get organic stuff. One of the problems that I see is that Springfield's going through a rough time now, and it, it, the reputation that you see on TV doesn't always mirror the reputation of the community. There's some bad elements in the community, and maybe a lot of farmers would not want to come here. They might want to set up a farmers market, but they want to do it downtown Springfield. They might want to set up and do it up in the Eastfield Mall. This right here, you have maybe 75% of the traffic is people on foot. It's within the community, so they wanted it right in their community. So we decided to uh, we decided to put one here for them. One out of every five families here in Mason Square is food insecure, um, meaning that they went without food at least once um, out of the 12 months. You know, it's harder and harder um, every year, especially this year, in regards to um, our economy and you even have people who are coming from two working households working full time mm-hmm. still having a hard time just trying to put food yeah. on the table or making a choice um, from paying your bills to getting prescriptions paid. Or to buy um, bread. Basic, yeah, basic things. Yeah. So we started the market last year working with um, 
neighborhood residents um, out of each community. Uh, Mason Square is combined of four neighborhoods, um, Upper Hill, McKnight, Bay Area, and Old Hill um, neighborhood. And just residents coming together, giving their feedback, um, also including Garden in the community who also had a lot of input of how we should start this market, what we can do um, to get people what they need here in this area. Garden in the community is a project of NOFA, which stands for the Northeast Organic Farming Association. Um, it's a youth urban agriculture program or youth-based um, urban agriculture program and basically what we do is take lots that were once vacant and we cultivate them and till them from the ground up and put gardens on them to grow flowers, vegetables, herbs, all types of different things with kids that are in the city. When we originally started, the, um, the, all the land that we gardened on was owned by the city. Um, we had two, um, we started off with two lots, I believe. They were both on Central Street. We had a really big um, piece of land and where there used to be like an apartment complex that had like burned down or something like that that was there. And then there was a smaller piece that was next to like a drugstore and in between like some uh, um, abandoned building. And um, they were both owned by the city, but since there was nothing going on with them, they allowed us to use the land. The bigger piece of land got taken away from us by the city because they were selling it to have houses or something put up on it, but there's still nothing going on with it. It's just like a piece of land that's just full of um, weeds, like up to like yay high. It's like ridiculous, so we could have still kept it. We got a worm to show you. We can show you that there is life happening in the <laughs> soil. This soil that had no life two years ago, so it's happening. A worm or two here and there. The youth get their own 10 by 10 foot plot on which they are allowed to garden, do design their own plot, design their own layout, grow their own vegetables, and they are allowed to take the food home to their families and friends. I remember a comment once saying like, oh my god, it tastes like real broccoli. You know, that, oh my, we can grow real broccoli, and the, they get into it. Nothing like the bigger tomatoes <laughs> in, in the eggplant. Cherry tomatoes? <laughs> It's nice. Yeah, when you're on the farm, just pick up and eat. I love the idea that we can actually have vegetables that are picked fresh. I mean, they look better. People will be more inclined to buy them. They're not sitting there wilting on a back porch or somewhere waiting to be sold. It's, I mean, we want to give our customers the freshest thing. So what better way to do it than picking it the morning of the market? I used to vend here before the market started. I used to bring my stuff down here and set up on the corner of the uh, credit union on State Street. And I used to sell for about five or six years before the vendors were here. So when they decided, the, the concerned citizens of Mason Square decided to form a, to get a farmer's market going because a lot of people in the community was asking for fresh vegetables and produce. Someone told them that I had been down here vending and if I'd like to join the market with them, and so I joined the market. I have a co-op. I started a co-op in, in uh, Hadley, and the name of the co-op is the Pioneer Valley Growers Co-op, and it consists of about five or six farmers who grow different things, and I buy from them and bring it to the market. I don't own any land in Hadley. What happens is where I live, the farmer there, he grows about... Uh, probably about 50, 60 acres of corn, maybe more. And he gives us a piece of land on his land to farm. The first time I was vending, this lady came to me and said, she said, boy, you got any tomatoes? I uh, said, yeah. She said, boy, there ain't no green tomatoes here. It just happened that that afternoon my aunt came by. But she lives in Springfield. I said, Aunt Dot, this woman keeps coming and bothering me for green tomatoes. She said, well, you need to get some because she's probably from the south, and in the south they have fried green tomatoes. They slice them up, they bread them, and they fry them like you would eggplant. 
So a lot of people in the community like fried green tomatoes. So I started getting green tomatoes. I got red tomatoes. They said they want peaches. I got peaches. They said they want kale, mustard green, collard green. I got that. They said they wanted corn. We did corn. So whatever they tell me that they're looking for is what I bring. When you come here, and even though you produce or bring top-notch things, you can't necessarily sell it for the price that you should get. You got to kind of moderate. So when I set up my stall, I calibrate most things to coincide with the, uh, with the coupons that are handed out. Community gathering is the biggest reward, um, and making people, sh making sure that they stay connected. Um, like with Department of Transitional Assistance, who's here today doing food stamp applications, having the WIC office and other local agencies out here supporting what they do, while also reaching out to the community, um, I think is a big thing. We really want to push fresh fruits and vegetables, so I'm hoping that it will grow along those lines, maybe even offering more meats, dairy products, um, and things along those lines, and then, you know, bringing in small vendors, as um, far as crafters and things like that, but I really do see it growing to be a big market and more festival-like. More people talking to their neighbors, more people growing food in their own backyard, and then I think there's a, a natural need or a natural, um, I don't know, a natural flow that, that comes with that and just more people knowing that they can do it. The biggest challenge sometimes is, is trying to convince people that this is a real solution. I mean obviously it's not the answer to everything but that it's just a real solution in terms of getting food into the community, providing jobs for people, enabling people to feel you know empowered to do something in the community. Regardless of what, even if I'm wrong about everything else I've just said, um, I know that teaching kids how to grow food and helping them be a part of that, that there's, there's nothing wrong, you know, that, that that's the one right thing that, that has to happen. Solutions aren't always top down or hardly ever really top down. I mean, it always starts at this level and then it's the leaders who have to listen to the people for what they really want. Come down and check it out. Don't listen to the news or don't listen to what people have to say. Come down and see what the spirit of the market is. I hope that it will grow and, you know, that more people will support the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. I brought some squash and corn and tomatoes and cabbage and potatoes. Corn and apples and tomatoes and peppers and cabbage and collard greens. <laughs> tomatoes, bell peppers. Um, I grow thyme, uh, uh, basil, uh, eggplant, uh, Jamaican pumpkins, 